of the regular show on Terrestrial Radio, and you wanted a little bit more, so that's why you found the Gun Talk After Show podcast, where we saved all the best things that we can't say on regular radio. Now, here's Tom, Michelle, and Jim for the Gun Talk After Show. All right, we're doing the after show today. It's going to be uh, Mr. Jim Kinsey and me, and we kicked everybody else out of the studio. How you doing, partner? I'm doing great, buddy. What's happening? Oh, yeah, it's always fun. It was a fun time. We got to talk to a lot of our friends today, uh, wrapped it up with Rob Latham, which is just always fun. You know, I don't know if you heard it, but he says, look, he says, just go out and, and get a gun. He says, I don't care. If, you know, he says, I'm supposed to say it's Springfield Armory because that's who he works for. Sure. He says, but just buy a gun. He's... He's an ambassador for the shooting sports. Right. Well, you know, that's kind of industry-wide, man. These guys are all competitors, mm-hmm. and they're best buddies. It's it's like anything I've never seen before. I, I just, it well, blows my and, mind. And you ask him, he'll say it on the air. He says, yeah, I was shooting a SIG, uh, and then uh, he says, yeah, and I love my Smith & Wesson revolvers, and, you know. He's but, just but, like, but, but, but you work for Springfield, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's always funny we laugh because in other industries, when you go to a trade show, you better not even be seen talking to someone who works for a competitor. Sure, sure. And we go to our trade shows, and over there you got Rob Latham and Max Michelle from SIG, you know, and somebody else from another company, and they're all shooting the breeze or going out to dinner or, you know, because they're friends, and they shoot together, they compete together, and, yeah, when we get together, we'll compete, you know, for business. Sure. But we all have that, I don't know, shared culture, shared interest, shared threat, if you will. Yeah, yeah, we're all in it together. Yeah, exactly. One of the things I was going to ask you about, people don't know your background, but, you know. (laughs) There's a good reason for that. That's right. You're in witness protection (laughs) program. That's probably a good thing. There you go. (laughs) I don't know. We've been doing gun talk together for how long now? 15 years. Yeah, wow. Oh, God, it only seems like 30. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and we finish each other's sentences, you know, yeah, it's terrible. it's kind of weird. So, yeah. all right. But uh, before that, you were not what I would call a gun guy. Is that fair to say? Yeah. I mean, I, I had, uh, you know, air rifle training as a kid, which mm-hmm. I always liked. I thought it was cool. Uh, and then I, as I got into early adulthood, uh, I took a job in retail where back in the day, credit cards were just starting to be, you know, used. So right. everything was cash. And I started carrying around large sums of money for other people and said, you know what, this is probably put myself in a silly situation here. Mm. So I went ahead and, and uh, I didn't do any training. I went to a range, bought a gun and a Clint Eastwood holster to be cool. Um, and <laughs> it was it was a breakaway shoulder holster. It was really cool. But I could oh. conceal it at work because of my, my sport coat and stuff. OK. Uh, and I'd, I'd make bank drops and stuff. And after I got out of that industry... Uh, for some reason, I just didn't feel my life was in jeopardy and was basically clueless, to be honest. This is before you figured out it really wasn't about the money that people would, would rob you or kill you for, for free almost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as a favor to me, That's really. Right. Oh, yeah, I don't so, need your money. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> then when I started working with you, it was only, you know, be relatively ignorant to not catch on to the, the drift of what's happening. And so I got into it, and it, it kind of rekindled. I had interest before. I used to really mm-hmm. love the shooting part, and we'd go up north, northern Michigan and shoot and stuff. And I, and I liked that, but I didn't carry. Uh, and then, I, like I said, kind of got out of her a couple of years, hooked up with you, and you're, you're to blame for the 37 pistols and 14 <laughs> rifles. And I'll <laughs> take a number. Everybody's yeah. got that complaint. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm really into it now, and I, I try to you know, spread that around a little bit. I don't know. I'm just going to say, you, 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 know, you, you became uh, an enthusiast, and then you became an advocate, and then you became kind of an ambassador because you, you do outreach and bring people into shooting all the time. Yeah, I I, uh, I think if you expose enough people to it, I've taught probably, I don't know, we're, we're trying to guess, but probably 50 people a year on average, not probably a little bit less than that, but it's probably about 500 people that, that we've taught how to shoot out for, here. For a guy who is, is not an instructor. Right, you're right. Just, you're yeah, just I'm taking not, it out and getting them started yeah, I'm not. I'm not a certified. I can't give anybody their concealed carry thing or anything else. Don't really have an interest in that. Uh, my interest is just getting people safely handling shooting firearms and, and the enjoyment part happens. I think out of those 500, I think I had one gal one time say, you know, thank you. I'm really glad I tried this. It, it, it's not my thing, but mm-hmm. I really appreciate you. And we started with 22 and worked on up and stuff. But, you know, one out of 500, that's pretty darn good. You know, you, you may not be able to give them their permit, but you could at least stock a whole bunch of those concealed carry badges. And you can <laughs> hand those out. Oh, you mean they're licensed to kill, aren't they? Isn't that what... <laughs> 
Uh, but the neat part is, is you know, I've got uh, several buddies of mine that have come up through shooting who now they have become instructors and they can certify. So, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's neat that they they've taken the ball and kind of run with it. And mm-hmm. so, you know, I'm, I'm still a pipeline to that. Plus, I think anybody that goes to concealed carry course who's been on the range at least once has a little little advantage, a little, little less green, you know, mm-hmm. and they're more comfortable and, and less sure. embarrassed and stuff to, to say, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. They can, they can do that with me, and I get them at least where they're safe. Did you ever think about, uh, you know, getting certified and becoming an instructor? Nah, nah, yeah. I don't, it's just not my thing. I don't. Yeah. Okay. You know, I like this is more casual, you, and it's, you know, I can, I don't know, I just, I, I guess I could, I qualify, but I just never really had the drive to, to do that because of all the other connections I have. You know, my buddies, they actually own courses and, and uh, facilities to shoot at and everything else, and I, I sent a lot of work Michelle's way. So it, it's kind of more, uh, the ambassador thing's more my thing. Though. Yeah, you know, and it, that's the whole thing. You do have people you can send people to for formal training and where they can get their your certificate, their permit, all that. Sure, sure. If I can be a, a source to get them there, great. But they're going to be a little bit more comfortable when they do because they're, they, they've got the initial jitters kind of worked out. Yep, exactly. All right, tell you what, I'm going to take a break. When I come back, I want to talk about what used to be one of my favorite uh, restaurants, a whole chain of them. And they're, they've got their no-gun policy, and they're getting robbed left and right. Come back, we'll talk to you about uh, my favorite used to be breakfast place. The 45 Auto, also known as the 1911, is the standard other defensive pistols are measured against. No matter what pistol you carry, techniques developed around the 1911 are vital. You know you need training. And you know your concealed carry class definitely was not training. Now Gun Talk presents an exciting DVD, Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. Tiger's unique training style will have you drawing, moving, shooting, and running your gun better, no matter what style pistol you prefer. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can order our DVDs of Tiger's instruction. ShopGunTalk.com also has a two-DVD set, including Concealed Carry One. Get both for the information you know you need. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com has DVDs, books, and other essential gear. ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. I am a huge fan of the Greasy Spoon. Uh, it's, uh, do you mean that literally or? Well, some of the restaurants you go to, yeah, you do get the Greasy Spoon, you know. No, I mean, are you literally huge, huge fan. <laughs> oh, I am that too, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Waffle House. Yeah. I always like Waffle House. Uh, yeah, I know. They're small and they're, they're kind of weird. and But I kind of like that you go in, they greet you and all that. But then they they went anti-gun or no gun. They've got no gun policy, gun-free zone, all that. Only problem is I'm looking here. Here's a uh, Waffle House being robbed in Louisiana, one in Georgia, one in Georgia, one in Alabama. Let's see. This well, one aren't aren't no gun signs a lot cheaper to produce? I, I don't know, don't know for a fact. I guess I'm asking. Aren't no gun signs a lot cheaper to produce than "Please rob us, we're vulnerable" signs? Just well, it's fewer words. That's true. Well, you that's just what use I mean. One yeah. Simple thing. Yeah. Less this was in and stuff, Tifton, yeah. Georgia. According to the Tifton Police Department, there's a six thousand dollar reward being offered for information that leads to the arrest, prosecution, and conviction of those responsible for the murder of Jesse Hall, a Waffle House employee shot to death in the parking lot of Waffle House. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with the Waffle Houses, uh, but as soon as they decided to go no gun, I decided to go no Waffle House. Hmm. Now, I've uh, I've been told they have signs there, but like, you know, early morning after a gig kind of deal, I've, I've never noticed the sign. I guess, oh, okay. guess I was kind of tired. They, well, you may have gone to one that already removed the signs, probably, I imagine. It's, it must be. You know, one of those, yeah. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, same deal. And every one of those I've been to has a sign. Um, oh, yeah. So oh. I'm perfectly happy to do without the crummy uh, wings. <laughs> there. You know, so that I, I can get beer any place and wings, not a big deal. And, and you, besides, you can watch football anywhere. That's right. You can watch football anywhere, and we have better uh, food in Louisiana. Than chains anyway. So what Bam. 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 There you go. There you go. All right. So talk to me about our guest we had, Andy Brown, uh, 
Wow. Dude. I mean, how impressive is that? Whew. You can tell he's getting a little bit choked up about it, and I'm surprised he kept it together that well. It's uh, It just goes it go, go, shows to go you mm-hmm. what uh, training and, and keeping in your wits about you because he's gone through it in his mind as well as physically training for it. And it's interesting because I'm reading the book, and he's talking about you know a lot of practice, a lot of shooting, uh, you know, became shot expert in the Air Force. Uh, but he went much further than what they required. He couldn't afford the uh, M9, the Model 92 mm-hmm. Beretta. That he couldn't have that for himself. He couldn't take it off a of base, so he bought a Taurus, which is the clone of that, but it was less expensive. Mm-hmm. But it's the same thing that he carried, and he shot it all the time. He just made he made himself a sheepdog, and we always talk about the sheep and the sheepdogs mm-hmm. and that whole deal. And he was mentally ready to go toward the sound of gunfire because he'd done it a thousand times in his head. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the yeah. idea, I mean, everywhere you go, people will tell you, well, why do you even practice at long range? You're never going to have a, a shot like that in a self-defense situation. Well, except if there's a guy with a rifle shooting at you mm-hmm. and he happens to be 70 yards away and you got a clear shot at him. You know, and the hmm. funny part was he said, it's funny because I have said the same thing about a hunting deal before with great rifle. I said, I said if I can see it, I can hit it. Mm-hmm. He said, "He said I knew if I could see him, I could hit him. All right. And it took him a couple shots, obviously, yeah. but that's Well, I mean, I mean okay. he hit the guy. Uh, the guy didn't go down. So, but man, this, is, this book is really an amazing read. It is, I'm just going to warn people, it is dense. It, there's a lot of information here, but it's also captivating. And you just keep reading the details about this uh, airman who is clearly uh, mentally ill. Mm-hmm. And... The doctors are recommending he be discharged. They're saying this guy is dangerous. And the uh, superiors in the Air Force are going, ah, well, no, just let, put him back to work. Wow. Yeah, just brush that under the table. That's fine. Yeah, yeah not on my watch. I'm not going to worry about it. Right, I'm right. not going to let it hurt my career. Yeah, until it goes into the hospital and shoots up a place and kills mm-hmm. a bunch of people. They say kill five people and wounded a bunch more. Twenty-two. Yeah, yeah, wounded twenty-two more. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, he said he felt guilty, like personally responsible for for the gunman shooting. That he could have reduced those numbers better if only this. It's like wow. Okay, what a hero. His response time is two minutes, and he was on a bicycle. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean. And as soon as he got there, he put a stop to it. It's once again, how many times have we said this, right? Mm-hmm. Guy with a gun shows up, the it's the end of the problem. Because the bad guy either gets shot by the good guy with a gun or he shoots himself. It yep. just seems to be what happens. Yeah, a little over four seconds per person. If you do the math, 27 people hit in under two minutes. Mm, wow. Yeah, so every four seconds, somebody's dropping. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, so... They uh, was the police officer. I can't remember the name of the guy. He came up with the concept of the stopwatch of death. Hmm. He said it is a time situation. You cannot wait and call for backup. You cannot wait around till you know what's going on. You just have to go because, as you said, every four seconds somebody's going down. Yeah. You sit there for two minutes. Twenty people just got shot. Yep. Yeah, the weird thing is he said he heard the gunfire and he instantly rode to it. I don't know, but I can't speak for you, but I personally, I'm gone. I'm not going to be curious to go see, oh, no, there's a gunman down the block. Well, of course, that's the difference. That we, we're not sworn to do that. That's not our job. Right, right. Uh, you know, I'm saying it takes a special breed yeah. To, oh, yeah. to take on that career. No doubt. And then I, I will tell you, when you get into the rest of it, I mean, it's like, you know, the uh, alcohol problems, the job problems, mm-hmm. the uh, personal relationships. And I'd heard about all that, but then to read it from a guy firsthand that it happened to, really something. Yep. And not, this is not even talking about the, uh, I mean, God, I'm looking right now at the pictures, this B-52. A B-52 is a huge plane. Oh, sure. This guy's flying an air show, and he took such chances with it, he lost control of it and crashed the airplane, uh, the hmm. jet in the middle of the air show. The book is, again, it's Warnings Unheated, in case somebody didn't catch that part of the show. Uh, Warnings Unheated it's by Andy Brown. Highly recommend it, man. Good, good book. What? A, I mean, like I say, I would really like to meet that guy and shake his hand. Yeah, no doubt. All right, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we got a couple other things we want to talk about. Don't go far. The After Show will be back in 60 seconds. If 
you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Dealio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Dealio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Dealio. Made in America. Gluten-free at the App Store and Google Play or Gundelio.com. All right, Jim, I'm out of things I want to talk about. Okay, well, <laughs> so it's a short after show. First time ever, right? We could call it the after short. <laughs> you are a weird dude. You do know that, right? Just one? <laughs> Singular, oh, wait, you uh, mean? All the all the uh, voices in your head? Yes. <laughs> it's, yes, thank Tom. You, thank you, Sybil. Yes. <laughs> and you know that whole Sybil thing was proved BS, right? Yeah, it turned out to not be true, yeah, right? She, Even though they she, made this movie. Yeah, she, it's a she good movie. It, she admitted it in later years. I don't know if it was deathbed kind of thing, but she was in later years said, no, 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 I'm just, you know, off the wall. I'm, and, I'm just weird. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't really have all those people inside of me. Right. How strange. Although... You could say that even just doing that makes you mentally ill. Oh, sure. Oh, she's definitely mentally ill. Just, <laughs> yeah, and then the guy that said, uh, famous psychiatrist, can't think of his name, said uh, on his deathbed, uh, oh, the guy that um, uh, coined the term ADHD, Yeah. he claimed on his deathbed that he had made it all up and it doesn't even exist. <laughs> so, who knows? I don't know. There are a lot of kids uh, getting medicated for it. Yes, yeah. For whatever that is. Look how good the situation we're in worldwide, too, huh? Speaking of the medication thing and, and guns, mm-hmm. uh, there are going to be more and more people going to get themselves into real trouble in terms of buying guns if they are using otherwise legal marijuana. Oh, now is it is marijuana any different than um, you know Percocets or Darvons or any of the other well, killer kind of stuff things? When you fill out the forty four seventy three form when you buy a gun, mm-hmm. get asked if you are a user of. It says uh, it, drugs, I think it but, says addicted, though, doesn't it? Uh, I'm not sure it says addicted, but it specifically says marijuana is, you know, maybe legal in states, but it's not legal under federal law. And right. so if you are a user of marijuana, that prohibits you from buying a gun. Yeah, and I suggest not doing bongs at the counter. You don't want to do that when they're running hmm. the paperwork. Well, I've played pong. Is that the same thing? Same, same thing, basically. Okay, yeah. I thought so. Yeah. That's Beer good. pong. <laughs> Beer pong. <laughs> that wasn't what I'm thinking. But hey, while you yeah. run that paperwork, we're going to be over here with the ping pong ball and some That's beer. Right. You hold, guys don't mind. Hold my beer so I can fill out this 4473. <laughs> Speaking Mayor. of 4473s, just why, 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 tell me, because you're all knowing and I'm all knowledge sponging. There's so many felons that are stupid enough to fill out 4473s, which is, is in effect another felony itself. <laughs> they don't prosecute. They prosecute like four or five guys in 10 years. Yeah. Why? It's ridiculous. Uh, make more laws. Let's not enforce the stuff we got now. Let's yeah. just make more. Yeah. It is against the law for a convicted felon to buy a gun. And so the guy goes in, fills out the form, attempts to buy a gun. They go to the background check. I'm sorry, he's got a felony conviction. And then they deny it. But then nobody goes back and says, hey, that was a crime and arrest him for it. Because the truth of it is, it's really not about trying to find the bad guys. You know, uh, the 4473, all of that comes out of the Gun Control Act of 1968, which was uh, done in the wake of JFK and Martin Luther King and Robert Kennedy being killed. Mm -hmm. And they said, we must do something, do something, do something. So they came up with this law. The before that, we didn't have uh, gun licensed gun stores. You could buy a gun in a hardware store or, or a uh, service station. Heck, you get mailed to your house. Sears Roebuck. That's, that's right. You could uh, send them your money, and they would mail you a gun to your house, and there were no problems. <laughs> Did I just date myself by uh, Sears, yeah, Sears, Sears Roebuck mail order? Yeah. And I thought you were dating yourself doing that whole Sybil thing. So you're going to ask yourself Did, Dinner and a date. movie? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the Gun, Gun Control Act, GCA 68, 
was a horrendous piece of legislation. And people say, well, and we had waiting periods. We were able to get the waiting period killed off by doing the instant background check, the next check. And people say, well, don't you think there ought to be a background check on people who buy guns? I said, no. I mean, it just drives some people crazy. I said, no, there should be no background check on anybody buying a gun. Are you kidding me? I mean, bad guys get guns. The only people who go through this are the good guys, except to your case, Jim. Sometimes the bad guys do, and they try, but it doesn't work. They don't get arrested, so they just go buy a gun on the street. So what's the net effect of it? Right. You're not keeping any bad guys from getting guns. Yeah. Just it's frustrating. It really is. Designed to placate, not to catch anybody. So how are you liking that little uh, bodyguard? Ooh. As a matter of fact, I had a real good buddy of mine. As a matter of fact, you know Todd uh, was texting me back and forth. So what do you think about the bodyguard? I'm thinking about just adding a laser onto my Caltech. And, but man, I held the bodyguard, and it was so cool. <laughs> like, you should have shot it when you were here, man. I told you. Well, you know, I mean, to be fair, the Caltech is very nice. Yeah. But it is, I don't know, 20-year-old design now, at mm, least. Could be. Could, could be. be 20 years. And it's cool. I shot his without it's, the laser. They make an uh, add-on laser trigger guard. Have you seen mm-hmm. them? The, like, under-the-barrel kind of... Oh, yeah. It's really kind of cool. Yeah. He hasn't got that part yet, but... Yeah, and, of course, the Caltech is kind of very, very similar to the Ruger LCP, mm-hmm. which is a good concept. The bodyguard's a little bit larger, isn't it? Slightly, but I I, I think, I mean, it might be my imagination, it feels slimmer, but maybe because it's bigger and it's the same width, it feels, you know, one of those deals. Mm-hmm. But I, It I, seems I, like it shoots bigger, if that makes sense. It feels yeah. better when you shoot it. Oh yeah, yeah, it does feel better. Well, it's a, l- a little, little bit girthier. Um, girthier. Girthier. Yeah. You like that? <laughs> yeah, I like girthier. You know, <laughs> it's you know, and I mean, it, as we know, it's the sliding scale of when guns are tiny, they're harder to shoot, and as they grow bigger, they're harder to carry, but easier to shoot. Right. I'm just thankful my bodyguard's not in ten. It would be a real issue. Uh, yeah, that'd be like a one shot. Or I'm done. I'm okay. I'm out of here. Yeah. Okay. The bad guy's down, but my wrist is broken. That's right. We. That's <laughs> right. We. We need medical help here for more than one person. <laughs> exactly. But I love it. To answer your questions, I. I love oh, it. Okay. It's, it's easy to conceal, and I, I. Just like the LCP, I carry just just about everywhere. And uh, you're an LCP fan, also. Well, I had an LCP, and then I, right. uh, I had a, a close family member need a gun. I said, you know what. Yeah, you, you take this. Yeah, you do this someday. I'll get it back, maybe. Right. Okay. So, and I'm yeah, I'm a fan of the LCP. I use that. What is it recluse holster? It looks like a wallet. It's slick. It's one of those deals of that's the gun you carry when you really can't carry a gun otherwise. Yeah. Right. And there, there's a lot of places around here that, uh, well, actually, in, in my travels, that you know, who's going to know if they don't see it? Well, you got some big bulge sticking out. Mm-hmm. Of you, you know, it's mm-hmm. more likely to say, uh, sir, do you mind if we? You know. Well, and we're lucky to have some choices there. It's like uh, Sig has an itty bitty. Was it? Not the 938. I can't remember with the designation. 238. It's teeny tiny little 380, but it's like a little bitty 1911 with a little thumb safety and it with a good trigger. It's just wonderful little pistol. Yeah. Now on, those, on, on the little pistols like that, like even on my bodyguard, it's got a mm-hmm. safety. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I it's physically there. I'd like it removed, but for now it's just disabled. I, I never use it. You just don't use it. Yeah, it's too small. I mean, I don't care how much you train with it. It's, it's just physically, and it's not a matter of manufacture. It's a matter of physics there's just, there's just not enough uh, real estate there right right and you would really want to risk your life mess around looking for a little mini safety that you know mm-hmm. just slipped off your knuckle kind of deal no it's a good point so i just so, don't use it i know a lot of people who do that <clears throat> i think that's one of the reasons the car i don't think car has uh, a manual thumb safety on their little bitty guns and the cars are very nice also yeah that's what michelle's mother-in-law carries yeah uh-huh and has for a long time she's uh She's a big car fan. I think hers is nine, but it's a, it's a real mm-hmm. mini nine. And she yeah, has, they've got three you know, three eighties too. Yeah, yeah, forty fives. You know, we're blessed right now. We have an awful lot of choices. Like as we were saying, it's a good time to buy. I hadn't thought about the thing until we were talking with Rob Latham about how cheap ammo is. What do you say? A couple hundred bucks for a thousand rounds of nine? Now he's finding. Wow, man, I'd like to get. A, I got to ask him where he's finding that because that's 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 good. That'd be worth me hoarding even more. Because I still got all the ammo I bought when I was hoarding before. You're down to like 100,000 rounds. It's getting, oh, you're God, kind of anemic. You're ammo it's anemic. Right. <laughs> it's frightening. It's just, what will we do? <laughs> oh, I know. We'll switch to 40 or 45. It'll be fine. <laughs> don't worry. It's all good. Oh, in that case, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, don't worry. It's, it's fine. 
Oh, man. Well, let's see. I am going to uh, head up to the mountains. We're going to see a little eclipse action in Idaho, and then we'll be uh, doing the show from Idaho next week, which will be fun. Ooh. Yeah. Idaho. Idaho potatoes. So I'm going to take my revolver mm-hmm. just because I feel revolverish when I'm out there. My <laughs> seven shot three fifty seven. Mm. Yeah. Seven shot. That's so cool. I know, isn't it though? That's it just neat. is. You know. And I was thinking about what well, I could go with the uh, the five shot forty four special, but then I wouldn't have seven shots. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now do you have uh do you have a speed loader or uh clips? I've got the... the what they call the company's tough T U F F. Okay. And they're strips. It used to be called Yankee strips way back. And it's just a little strip that you can actually put uh, in this case, seven rounds into, uh-huh. and they slide into your pockets, a little rubber strip, and you can load two rounds at a time in a cylinder, just kind of peel it and peel it. Oh, Once okay. you see it, you go, okay, I got that. Okay, so relatively fast and easier to, flatter to carry than a... Flatter to carry than a round speed loader, yeah. yes. Yeah. And you can slide it into your pocket, your side pocket or something. So if I got uh, 14 rounds of 357, probably can get myself out of the situation. Yeah. You're not, carrying, you're not carrying that brake action Webley anymore? Yeah, I was thinking about that. I thought I would go that, of course, and the, the takedown 4570 lever action. I always take that everywhere I go. Right, right. Holsters are kind of tough to find, but. That's why we wear our backpacks, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> that and your katana sword. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Which is really weird when you walk into Starbucks, I have to admit. Well, it's, you know, it's weird until you pull the whole face mask down and you do the whole Deadpool thing. It's all, it's great then. So everybody loves, oh, a great costume. Yeah, okay, good deal. Oh, Fine. God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we're not weird. No. We're, we're just different. Mm. <laughs> we're relatively harmless. <laughs> Somewhat. Right. All right. Well, I am going to go out and do a little shooting out there, a little fishing. Uh, I'm going to go uh, celebrate the Second Amendment. And. Under the eclipse, but not at the same time. You do that, I'm going to get back to slaving over a hot mixing council. You go for it. Jim, appreciate it. All your time and everybody else. Again, go out, do a little shooting. Invite somebody to go with you. Oh, yeah, and uh, be sure to check out that eclipse. It's got to be one of the cooler things. Well, that wraps up another Gun Talk After Show. But if you want even more gun-related stuff, don't forget to check out Gun Dealio. It's the app for Apple and Android phones that connects you to all the Gun Talk shows, plus even more. And we'll catch you next time for the Gun Talk After Show.